really bears just looking at the simple quality of the surface finish of this steel. Um, this is one just right out of the case. Absolutely, it looks polished and it's not. Um, nothing has been done to this barrel uh, other than take it out of a case and wipe it with a cloth. And when you see a gun in the white, as this is known, um, there's nothing that can be hidden. Um, bluing, case colors, engraving, all these things can actually uh, not only beautify a gun, but, but hide uh, imperfections in the, in the surface quality uh, and machining of the steel. You're not going to hide anything here, and the, and the surface finish of this um, really tells you a lot about how this gun is made, both in material quality and the quality of machining. You will see the same thing with an all too familiar trunnion arrangement of a boss receiver. Um, if that looks familiar to your eye, it's for, it's for good reason. Um, but the important thing to realize is those older boss guns were made out of quite soft steel. They were, they were handmade, hand-fitted gun, each, each part by hand. To make a hand-fitted gun, you have to have steel soft enough to file and polish. You couldn't any more file uh, this, this metal than you could uh, a hardened kitchen knife. It is, it is just incredibly uh, hard uh, chromoly steel that, that has to be uh, machined by, by modern CNC. And it becomes very apparent when you just simply put one of these together um, and feel its smoothness, feel that there's a complete lack of play, listen to it close. Um, uh, this isn't a brand new gun. This gun's been shot uh, a, a fair amount. This happens to be John's personal gun. Um, but uh, again, you know, just, just looking the, again at a very fired gun, look at the surface finish of that metal. Um, that's not something, you know, this is an, an area that most every maker jewels. Most every maker does some sort of cosmetic change to this area. Um, ask yourself why they're doing that. Um, uh, there's, there's nothing to be hidden here as far as their, their quality of execution in this gun. Um, I'm going to touch back on balance and weight distribution for, for, for just a moment. Um, because how, you know, when, when, we, when we care to make a receiver out of a boss design, out of modern materials, not only the surface uh, hardness and, and wear properties, not only do they skyrocket, but we are also able to make a receiver that's just much smaller in size. If you look at this receiver and compare it to, say, a, a Satori or a DE, a Cole or a Kriegoff, I'm not picking on those guns. I'm just asking you to note how much smaller in size this is. And this is the reason why Parazzi's were always so heralded. They, they were not a light gun. They were just lively guns. They did not have a center mass centricity to them. And when, when we get rid of that heavy in the hand center mass aspect, now the things that we do with the barrel, the things that we do with the stock, we can achieve the exact weight distribution and balance in the, in the gun that we as, as an individual shooter want without running over to a scale and making sure that we didn't ebb into a nine pound gun and a nine and a half pound gun. Um, I'm a large person, I, I, I don't want to shoot a nine pound gun. I've always believed that a, that a properly balanced sporting gun should be in the eights. It should have proper linear recoil that comes directly back into the shoulder. And this is really where we start that journey with the receiver. If, if, if we start off with a very heavy receiver, that makes that really very challenging to do. If you look at the way they have made the barrel with the empty midrib underneath the fore end, they're allowed to balance the remaining of the of the gun in two ways, with the, with the midrib and with their choice of, of internal bore diameter, where they can control uh, the, the the ultimate thickness of the of the steel um, and the patterning attributes that it's going to have with how the forcing cone is treated, how the 
final internal bore diameter is going to be achieved. There's some backboard dimensions that we know yield better patterning, better felt recoil. Um, all attributes really go up with, with, without having a downside. These are all backboard length and forcing cones, chrome lined. Uh, the chrome lining's not doing us anything for performance, but it's a wonderful thing to come along in shotguns uh, as far as corrosion protection, not having to you know immediately go into the shop when you get home and, and, and clean a barrel. Um, uh, that chrome protection is just a, a really nice way of having a beautiful interior surface finish. It's just very easy to maintain as a competitive shooter. I'm coming in the shop with a, with a fired gun two or three days a week. I, I, I don't want the first thing that I do to, when I get home uh, is to immediately have to tear a gun down and, and clean it. That, that was always what we had to do. And that's just an ex, extra nice step that, that, that they take uh, to, to just make it easier for care and feeding.